Jade is currently in the US and I'm in Australia, but I want to send her a present, a cute and fluffy present. There's just one problem, and that's that cats hate water. And there's a lot of water between here and Pittsburgh. A boat is a no, and a plane would be too uncomfortable. I think I'll simply have to teleport her. Classically, all I would need to do is record the exact structure of her, send that data to Jade, and have her printed out on the other side using a sophisticated 3D printer. Although, even if the resolution of that printer was extremely high, the task of measuring the exact structure of something is not so simple when you consider the quantum nature of reality. To be able to record the exact structure of the cat, I would need to record the momentum and position of every particle. However, this is impossible due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which says that the more I know about one of these quantities, the less I know about the other. I'll never be able to gain enough information to create an exact blueprint. And even if I could, the process of measuring individual particles would probably kill the cat before I could make an exact copy. There is, however, an alternative form of teleportation, and that is quantum teleportation, making use of something called quantum entanglement. Quantum teleportation would not be able to send a cat, but at least Jade would get something from me. I'm going to attempt to send the contents of this box, box A, to her box, box B, on the other side of the world. The contents of this box is quantum information, and that is something that can't be communicated over the phone or internet. Quantum information tells us something about the state of a quantum system such as whether a particle is spin up or spin down. Spin relates to the fact that when you put particles through a magnetic field, they act like little magnets and can get deflected up or down. One way that objects can get magnetic properties is by spinning, like a planet, which is why we use the word spin Although, what is important is that it's something about the particles that makes them get deflected, some up, some down, when they're put through a magnetic field. It's just two distinct orientations. So how does quantum teleportation work? Well, the information needs to be sent through two entangled particles. When a particle with spin zero decays into two particles with spin half, the total spin after the decay still needs to be zero. This is because of the conservation of angular momentum. This means that the two decayed particles need to have opposite spin, one spin up and the other spin down. But remember that quantum physics is a bit weird and particles only choose a state when they're being measured. Until then, they exist in a superposition of all possible states. So say I go back to Australia and Toby and I go and collect these two decayed particles. She takes one home to Canberra and I take one to Pittsburgh, but the whole time neither of us have looked to see which one we have. So both particles are in this weird quantum state with a 50-50 chance of collapsing into spin up or spin down when measured. As soon as one of us looks into our box, our particle collapses into spin up or spin down. But the crazy thing is, at the exact same time, the other particle on the other side of the world collapses into the opposite state. This happens instantaneously. There was no time or means for one particle to communicate to the other. These particles are said to be entangled as they seem to somehow magically know the state of the other. Einstein called this spooky action at a distance as it went against everything he thought he knew about physics. And it turns out we can use this spooky action to do quantum teleportation. So quantum teleportation should really be called quantum communication because we're not actually teleporting anything physical. 
we're teleporting information, which is pretty much communication. I mean, think of a telegram. You're not actually sending the physical message, you're sending the information through two telegraphs. This is how quantum teleportation works, but with two big differences. Instead of sending information between two telegraphs, we're sending information between two entangled particles. Also, we're sending quantum information, which is a bit different from classical information. For one, quantum information needs to be embedded in a quantum particle. And two, quantum information can't be copied or destroyed. And here's a fun fact. A bit of quantum information is called a qubit. If Toby in Canberra wants to send me a qubit in Pittsburgh, it needs to be embedded in a third particle, which we'll call particle X. So now Toby has particle X and the first half of the entangled pair of particles, which we'll call particle A. She wants to send a qubit from particle X to my entangled particle, which we'll call particle B. She can do this by performing a quantum operation on her particles, which, due to the entanglement, makes the qubit from particle X appear on particle B. But because quantum information can't be copied or destroyed, the original qubit on Toby's particle X is now transformed into something else. Physicists were probably tempted to call this teleportation because now my particle B is effectively Toby's particle X. It's kind of like when you're faxing something. The piece of paper on the receiving end isn't the same as the one that was sent, but all the information is the same. The difference between this and quantum teleportation is that the original information is transformed into something else in the process. But this isn't the whole picture. Some of the quantum information that we need from particle X to get to particle B can't be sent through the two entangled particles. We need a classical means of communication, like the internet or a phone. A lot of people think that quantum teleportation means that we can communicate faster than the speed of light, but it's not true. Remember that we still need this classical channel to transport some of the information. This is all beautifully encapsulated in something politely called the no-go theorem. It says that information can't be communicated by entanglement alone. You need the classical channel so that relativity remains safe. So faster than light communication is a no-go. So will we ever be able to transport cats? Well... Hey Jade, I sent you a present. Go check your box. Hey cool, quantum information! A big thanks to Jade for making this video with me. Please go and subscribe to her channel. There is also a link to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please post any questions or thoughts about quantum teleportation down below.